Hi, Smarties. We are thrilled to reshare this episode that originally aired in January 2022. This episode is about emotionally charged task avoidance, and all the learners that we work with will have some sort of emotional response to tasks that they avoid. That's why they're avoiding them. And in this episode, we talk about what it means. We talk about what task avoidance looks like and the emotions around that. And we talk about how to figure it out by getting curious. And then we also, of course, share some examples from our own experience. Steph, you were a real big advocate of this episode. So what do you want to add? Yeah, I just want to say I know that I've gotten a lot of feedback about how this episode really resonated with a lot of people. Instead of looking at it as lazy, a word we don't like, and really flipping it on its head as whatever the task is, it's emotionally charged. And it's not just avoidance because there's avoidance and there's emotionally charged avoidance. And so this is where we're talking about the things that are emotionally charged, meaning they get a big reaction. This is where the meltdowns happen. This is where the big fights happen. This is where one parent is very upset about something and the kid is in a different spot about it. And whatever the scenario is, taking a step back and saying, is this emotionally charged? And who is emotionally charged about it and why? Just to be clear, when I say emotionally charged, I mean big emotions, meaning a lot of crying, a lot of fighting, yelling, whatever it looks like. Lying, avoiding the truth. These are big emotions. And when I'm sitting here saying this, take a second and think, what is an emotionally charged task that is going on in my household? And think about the why and who it's affecting. For us, an emotionally charged task is, of course, laundry which we talk about in probably 5% of our episodes, at least if not more. Last night I looked at my laundry and I thought, oh, (laughs) Rachel is going to ask me how many days has it been? How many days has it been? Listen, at this point, it's unclear. I don't know either. It's a problem. It's unclear. I'm digging into the clean clothes right now currently, but I've been getting curious about why it's so hard. And one of the things that I'm realizing is I might simply have too many things in my closet. It's not easy to pull the hangers out and put the hangers back. I'm going through it. A purge. A huge purge. I need to have one too. It's just... So let's put a time on the calendar. Yeah. And you and I will body double and we'll purge at the same time and talk about life and Top Chef and Below Deck. Yeah, and all the things. (laughs) Have you started Salt Lake City Housewives? Started it, but got diverted and other things. Okay, I'd like you guys to jump back into that. Okay, okay, all right. All right, that'd be good. All right, and with that, Smarty. Yeah, back to the episode. (laughs) We want to make sure that you stay connected with us. Please, please, please sign up for our email list. You can sign up by going to www.learnsmarterpodcast.com and sign up for our email list. We do not spam that list. We just make sure you know when an episode comes out. Sometimes there's freebies in those emails as well and other goodies, but please make sure that we stay connected. Yeah. Thanks for being here, Smarties. Let's dig in. You want to learn faster, but sometimes working harder is just not the answer. You have to learn smarter. The Educational Therapy Podcast. Hi, Smarties. Welcome to episode 190 of Learn Smarter, the Educational Therapy Podcast. I'm Stephanie Pitts. I'm Rachel Cap, And today we are talking about task avoidance and emotionally charged tasks. I feel like I need to get something off my chest in this episode because you know what I've been working on behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, this is not an avoidance task. It's a all in task. (laughs) I've gone all in. Let me just break it down. And you've talked about this before. Have I? Not the deep dive that you have done recently, but you have in the past. (laughs) Okay. So... I guess I've shared on the podcast before that every year I do a photo book for me and Adam. And I've done it every year since we've been together. The year of travel, you did one, remember? Oh, God, the year of travel. And the year of travel was two books. I remember. 2020 was just picture after picture after picture of Fritzy. Mm -hmm. But 2021, obviously, we've had a big year. And I'm overwhelmed. And I am avoiding working on the photo book. And my goal is always to have it for Adam for our dating anniversary, which is in January 24th. I get confused on the date. Don't tell Adam. Yeah. (laughs) He doesn't listen. And so, yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. What? 
Adam heard me in the other room, you guys. He just <laughs> called out and said, you suck at keeping up with teens. <laughs> Sorry, I love you. <laughs> what's your birthday and what's your phone number? Let's not do that on the podcast, honey. Okay. I know your birthday because it's Elliot's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> Do you want to come do the episode or because <laughs> he keeps talking to me from the other room anyway. So I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed with how many pictures I have. I'm overwhelmed with the fact that I want Adam's pictures too, which by the way, he's been saying for like two months that he'll get them to me. I'm sure it'll happen any moment now. I know that struggle. I dove headfirst into my project. You guys. I'm not kidding. <laughs> this is next level. Yeah, I called you like a week and a half and I was like, Steph, I'm overwhelmed by this and it's hanging over my head. And I thought to myself, there's got to be someone on Instagram who's talking about digital photo organization, right? Mm -hmm. So somebody has figured out how to do this better. I am not the only person in the world with this particular problem, which is a problem I've created for myself, but whatever. And of course I found a Instagram. She's talking exactly about this and I'm like, okay, I'm going to DIY it, which I'm not a DIY person, but I also did not want to pay her to do it. Okay. <laughs> so now I've just done a deep dive on her Instagram. I'm sure there are members of our smarty audience who would be interested. It is at Miss Freddy on Instagram. I called Steph and I was like, Steph, this account. And she's like, send it to me immediately. <laughs> and so I sent it to her. But then I told Steph all the things that I thought from a business perspective that she could be doing that she's not taking advantage of or just doing too much. And Steph's like, OK, <laughs> so I am like sitting here like, do I buy her online course? And this is the thing that I've been struggling with for the last two weeks. It's like something like seventy five dollars. Guys, this goes back to. When we're playing our game with the little vials. Oh, yeah. And it was $2.99 or something. And she had to debate about it for several days. <laughs> uh-huh. Here we go. So if you don't know that story, I didn't want to spend money to buy no ads on our game that we're playing on our phones right now. And so stupid. <laughs> I will happily spend $3, $3 on a coffee. Like, okay. So she has a course called Backup Boot Camp. And... I called our friend, Caitlin. Mm -hmm. I know Caitlin from college because I knew Caitlin would be like, buy it. And I want to do it with you. Like Caitlin's that friend. Mm -hmm. So I bought it. And so now I've been going through this course. And the reason I get to bring it up in this episode is because there are so many things that she tells us to do from an executive functioning standpoint that I see her executive functioning on fire in the way she set up this course. So one example is she wants you to have a digital iCloud. iCloud does not count as a backup. She explains why. And I'm like, ah, that makes sense. And so she starts you off by backing it all up to a server of your choice, Dropbox, Amazon, whatever. And she's like, start with this because it's going to take the longest and you can just let it run while you do everything else. I'm like, I love her. You know what I <laughs> yeah. mean? And she's like, you can do a bunch of other stuff while you're waiting for that to happen. By the way, it's been like three days. I am still backing up because there's so many photos. Then she has you gather all your photo collections from multiple different sources and put them in one. Mm -hmm. Is that not the principle that we talk about with all the systems? Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm knee deep in this project. I will probably forget that I talked about it on this episode and never give you an update, but just assume that I've finished the project. And then she has another course stuff. I don't know if I've told you on how to do like a family yearbook. Oh, and she says she can get it done in two and a half hours. And she says that completed is better than perfect. And I'm having an internal struggle of, is it really? Is having it done better than having it perfect? And I'm not sure where I stand on that. So we're just going to take it a step at a time. Right now, I'm doing the backup and compiling all the photos from all the things. By the way, this has been an extensive conversation with my dad, with my brother, because for whatever reason, they have my photos too. And so this is going around the family is what I'm saying. This has been all encompassing, guys. Yeah, I spent all day yesterday doing it in between taking care of Elliot. Yeah. But I have high follow through. Yeah, you do. It's true. But not everybody does. I know. And if you don't, then don't do it yourself and hire her to do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a lot of money, but yeah. obviously there's value in this. For sure. So let's talk about the task avoidance. 
when you're avoiding something, why would that be? It's emotionally charged. Are we going back to the episode now? We're done with my story? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, but it relates perfectly. Yeah, because it was overwhelming to me. Right. It's emotionally charged. It causes you stress or causes you overwhelm. Mm -hmm. A lot of tasks are emotionally charged. And the tasks that are emotionally charged for me are not necessarily the tasks that are emotionally charged for you. Correct. So if you're a parent listening, think about what's emotionally charged for you and what you get upset about, about your learner or vice versa. And you might not understand because emotionally charged tasks cause the avoidance, right? Because we want to not feel the uncomfortableness of the stress, of the anxiety, of whatever it is. So let's think about some things that were traumatic to me as a child, okay, in school. Not wanting to read aloud because of popcorn reading. That's when a teacher just picks somebody in the class and then they have to read the next section. I didn't ever want to do that because I needed to anticipate what the words were so I could review them before I actually read them when I was in like second grade. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of kids that I've heard talk about that and how upsetting it is and stressful, especially when they get made fun of because they can't do it as well or like other kids. Mm -hmm. And that's so hard. And so looking at something like reading, rehearsing this skill at home also becomes very emotionally charged. Because number one, it's not fun. And who does want to do something that isn't fun? Not a lot of people. And you as a parent might not understand or might not be able to relate. Or maybe you can. But these tasks, these are the questions, the why questions that you need to ask. Why is a child lying? Why is your partner lying? Mm -hmm. Why are these things happening or not happening? And what is the task and why could it be emotionally charged or why is it being avoided it's not about getting angry it's about getting curious my favorite thing and by the way it's okay to get angry too especially with the partner yeah (laughs) let's be honest (laughs) so now that we've sort of identified that something is being avoided And we're looking at the emotional reaction. And by the way, some kids are very good at hiding it. But if a learner is avoiding something, that's when we get curious. And it can look like a lot of different things. And there's a lot of interpretations that we hear when we're talking to parents, too, Mm -hmm. of what's going on. And that's when we kind of had these conversations about let's get curious about it and all that. So this is what it can look like. It can look like avoidance because it's hard and it also brings up wounds of inadequacy. And so it can be misinterpreted as lazy or unmotivated. And any time you are feeling like a learner you are living with or a client that you are working with is presenting as lazy or unmotivated, that is your invitation to get really curious and to have those difficult conversations with the other adults in that learner's life to explore that because kids hear that feedback and then they begin to self-identify with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm just lazy. And that can become one of those wounds that they have to work on forever Mm -hmm. to kind of combat that. So we don't want to put that on them. We want to get curious about it. If your learner is lying, that is for sure, (laughs) something to explore. So I also want to mention lying is developmentally appropriate. Let me say that again. (laughs) Lying is developmentally appropriate. That is how kids at a certain point are learning their boundaries. Mm -hmm. They're learning the importance of truth telling and why it's important. They're learning what they can get away with and what they can't get away with. It is part of individuating. Mm -hmm. And so doesn't make it any less painful for parents and teachers, but it is a sign that your kid's developing and growing. I want to just throw in there, if you're asking questions, don't ask set up questions so that they will lie. Yeah. If you know the answer, don't ask that question. Also, this is a really great opportunity to not ask yes or no questions. Mm -hmm. You want to cultivate stories out of them Mm -hmm. and encourage them to share a story and not just yes or no you. Yeah. This requires a high level of intentionality that as a parent is not always possible, 
but we're just giving you things to sort of think about in these moments. Or to think about and bring up at a certain point when it's not so emotionally charged. Yes, for both of you. Mm -hmm. Another way that this can be expressed when you're seeing this task avoidance is meltdowns and tantrums and crying. And sometimes I feel like this is more palatable for parents to understand because we expect our kids to melt down at a certain point. We expect them to tantrum. We expect crying as opposed to lying. We all think that our angels aren't going to lie to us. I look at Elliot and I'm like, you're going to grow up and one day you're going to say F you mom. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have to remember you like this. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about too, while you were saying that I've had parents or people say, you know, a learner who is on the older side is still having meltdowns mm -hmm. and tantrums and crying. Yep. And so we think it's like not developmentally appropriate at a certain age. Right. But where is it coming from? That's why you have to get curious because if they're still having meltdowns, it's because it's too much. Something is going on and they need help and they don't know how to express it to you. Yeah. So let's talk about some examples. I love this first example that we wrote because it is something that we both struggle with. <laughs> Putting away clothes. We all hate this chore. I will confess that our solution is to just put it on the guest bed. And then I just go in there and get Elliot's. It's usually Elliot's clothes. It's hard for us to fold those, to get to it, and then to put them away. Because whenever we're able to put them away, he's napping in there. Mm -hmm. So this is something that I do not mind doing laundry. I don't either. At all. I have no problem throwing it in. I have no problem drying it. Happy to do it. <sighs> Putting him away. It's a real challenge. What's another one, Steph? I was going to say this is me actually as of last night because I did some laundry last night and yeah. it's sitting up there. So cleaning up after yourself, that's one of those things like when you're baking, mm -hmm. if I do it as I'm doing it. Cleaning up as you go. Uh-huh. It's much more tolerable and I get it done. If I just pile it up and say I'm going to do it after, oh, I want to avoid it. I do it, but I want to avoid it. I really do. Hold on, everybody. Adam just airdropped me all the photos. <laughs> So now we know how things need to happen. <laughs> I need to call them out on the podcast. <laughs> what? Adam wants this left in the show. <laughs> Thank you, honey. You're welcome. <laughs> what else, Steph? What are other examples of emotionally charged tasks that we've seen from learners or experienced ourselves? Time tests. This one is all me, particularly when I was younger, particularly with the next thing on our list, which were math facts, like those mad minute, mad minute were really, really difficult for me. I found it really, really hard, stressful. I never forgot what they were called yep. because it was, I remember third grade. Oof. Rough. That didn't mm -hmm. feel good. Yeah. Being a late reader, which I was. Which I was too, according to my mom. I don't remember that. Yeah. So being a late reader is emotionally charged and not understanding and having to look at text, especially as you get older and comprehend and do stuff with it and write and all of that. It's really hard. And I would avoid it too, for sure. Another really big one that I am hearing doing the mile. Are you hearing that because I've said that to you? No, one of my clients. Okay. I relate. Wednesdays is run day. I hear about it every single day week. The amount of anxiety that that would cause me. And I was an active kid mm -hmm. and I played sports mm -hmm. and I hated running the mile because I had undiagnosed asthma. And so I wouldn't be tired, but I would have a hard time breathing through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You had to run the mile in fifth grade, I think, in order to graduate from elementary school. Oh, you're younger than me. No, it was middle school for me. Okay. And I remember my mom came. Oh, to like be supportive while I was doing it. Cause I think I must've been very, very anxious about it. Yeah. I don't blame you. Yeah. I hated Oof. that. Oof. I hated that. Tell that client I relate and this too shall pass. Yes, exactly. It's such a visual comparison and someone has to be first and someone has to be last. Yeah. Well, she's got A's in all of her classes except for PE. Because of the mile. Because of the running. She just, and I don't blame her. <sighs> I feel for her. All right. What are other examples, Steph? Failing tests. Don't want to take a test if you feel like you're going to fail or you failed last time or you fail multiple times or anything like that. That's emotionally charged. You don't want to study because if you think that you're going to fail, why study? I get it. Mm -hmm. Bad report cards. 
that's anxiety provoking. I remember when in elementary school, when you wouldn't know what was on your report card and your parents would go in for the parent teacher conference and I would have to wait outside and they were talking about me (laughs) for what felt like hours, which was probably 20 minutes, but felt like hours and not knowing how I was doing what they were saying, what my teacher was talking about. Because I used to sit in on my parent-teacher conferences because I liked hearing everyone talk about me. In When I went to middle school, when I changed to private school, mm-hmm. you sat in. But in the public elementary school, you didn't. And I had to wait outside the classroom. Huh. It was horrible. Oh. Uh. So these are some things that we just wanted to remind everybody. When you are seeing task avoidance... And these other emotionally charged experiences out of your learner, get curious. Mm -hmm. All right, Smarties, have a great week. Have a great week.